that someone has asked me to do a video on one of the questions is how do you get a man to spend more time with you and he's in a relationship or he's seeing other women as well how do you make him your man if you know he's always with another woman he won't take you out and do all the things that <clears throat> couples do like you're basically the side chick and he doesn't take you anywhere how can you get from side chick not being taken anywhere to get to the main spot of where the woman who's actually getting all his attention and privileges of being a girlfriend and you're not. Um, and y'all know I always keep it real so I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. And I asked my husband the same question so I'm gonna give y'all my opinion and then his opinion, okay? So here's mine. My opinion is if you don't want, if you don't want to be a side chick, don't act like one, okay? Take that off the table. Oh, hold on, y'all. Someone's at my door. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. So, first of all, you don't want to ever agree to be a side chick in the first place. Like, if you if you um, go into the relationship as the side chick, you have agreed to those terms. So you cannot say, okay, I want I'm a side chick, but now I don't want to be a side chick no more, and I want to take the place of the main girl. You can't agree to being a side chick ever if you want to take the girl's place. So. First of all, if you like the guy and he offers you the side chick position, decline it. Say, no, I'm sorry, I can't take this position as side chick because I'm main chick material. Um, but if you went ahead and accepted it anyway and now you want to get out of side chickdom, yes, side chickdom, you got, you, got to, you got to break the moral code. You either have to go and call the other girl and tell her what's going on or tell her what's going on or you're going to have to play... Uh, where you're no longer her, his side chick and that you are now have a boyfriend. Okay, you might have to lie and say you got a boyfriend. But men are very possessive and jealous. So if he really wants you, then he's going to say, hey, why, why do you got a boyfriend? What about me? Well, you're, you know, you're taken. You're not, you're not, te technically you're not single. So I didn't limit myself to meeting other people. Um, you were my you know, in between, I'm looking for a man. I'm looking for a boyfriend, you know. Now that I have one, I don't really need you anymore. So you're going to have to find another side chick. Um, that was just a temporary position for me. I, I was looking for a real man. And you weren't really real man material. So I let you go ahead and be my side man or my um, distraction until I found someone who was really worthy of me. So, bye. So you have to kind of play the reverse psychology role on and, like, kick him to the curve saying you got a man that meets your standards then he's gonna be like man I, I didn't meet her standards and she was using me I thought I was using her so whoever he's with at you know she, he's gonna be thinking about you the whole time because now you've dumped him and he thinks you're with some other guy you moved on that you weren't good enough that he wasn't good enough for you so now he's like man what did I do wrong maybe she and then he'll start thinking about what he could have done better if he's not really into the girl he's with then he's gonna start trying to be with you and take you away from this other boyfriend. And so if he ever calls you and say, hey, well, I thought we were growing towards something. I thought we were gonna be a couple. And, you were, and your, your response should be, well, you know, you don't take me seriously enough to be boyfriend material. You have other things going on and I'm not trying to be no side chick for the rest of my life. That was just temporary until the real man came along. Say real man. <clears throat> so, now that he's all his attention is on you and stuff like that, this is when you start making your demands. You say, okay, well, you know what? He's going to be out of town this weekend. You know, he's a military, say he's a military man. That means, you know, you have all this opportunity, you know. 
Like you can travel if you want to. You can, you know, get all the benefits of da 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 Because that's going to be hard to, to top, you know. Say, oh, he's a military man. He's, you know, he's on base this weekend. Just make something up so he's never there. And then he'll be like, well, do you want to go to lunch? Do you want to go do this? You know, he's going to try to get you back. Don't, don't meet with him unless it's in public. Don't meet with him unless he offers to pay and go out. Remember, he's trying to win you back. So in order to get somebody like that, you got to totally dump them, make up a fake boyfriend that's in the military, um, and basically tell that person that he's not good enough for you and he was just, you know, there temporarily until you met a real man, okay? You got you to gotta put them, you got to break them all the way down, okay, to where they are like little lapping puppies and want to, you know, get your attention back, okay? Now, it's not moral, but it works. Okay, now here's what my husband said, okay? Here's from a man's point of view. He said, whatever the main chick has that he takes out in public and gives his all to, maybe you should strive to become that. So I don't know, whatever that means, whatever she has that you don't, to be main chick, he says you should go after that. Uh, focus on yourself, improving yourself, to where you won't get treated like a side chick, but like a main chick, you know. When, when a man sees you, he don't see side chick uh, or someone to use. He sees wife material, girlfriend material. So he, men are visual creatures. This is what my husband told me to tell you. So me, I like to um, play mind games because they work faster. Okay. He don't. He don't know. That's how he got into this position that he's in. <laughs> but yes. So, you got to basically dump him and vent a mystery man. Don't give him the time of day unless he invites you out in public and pays for your food and treats you like the main chick, okay? And now he's trying to win you over instead of you trying to win him over. If he just dismisses you and say, well, go ahead then, blah, 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 he only meant to use you in the first place and he was not very interested in you as a person or with, for a future at all, okay? Now, there's one thing about men. They will go after what they truly want. They're not going to go after something they don't want. They're only going to give you effort and energy if they truly want you. If they don't, they're not, they're not going to care what you do. And when you understand that, you don't chase after men. Men are supposed to chase after you. Now, you can do a trick, like I just told you, and see if they will come after you. If they don't come after you, they don't really want you. They just want to use you up, okay? So... I'm going to leave it at that and um, you can take whatever advice you want out of that and you apply it to your situation. Um, you could take my husband's advice and apply both to the situation um, and see what you come up with and let me know what happened. Okay. Um, I'm going to do another question too. Okay. Someone also asked me, now this has nothing to do with like a love life. Someone asked me, why do people make New Year's resolution Lucian's? and not keep them, okay? So we're getting upon January and it's time to make those New Year's resolutions. Why do people make New Year's resolution on New Year's and why don't they stick to them? Okay, first of all, it's trend. If you're doing something that's trendy because everybody else is doing it and people say, oh, you're supposed to do this, this, and this at this time of year, it's not really a motivation for you. It's just you're following trend and you have no true desire or true passion to change from within or to do whatever your resolution was. It's just pushed on you. And so you never really wanted to do it in the first place, you know? Um, for instance, I just organized my entire closet and it wasn't a New Year's resolution. It was one day I was just inspired and I had this urge to get up and go organize my closet, okay? Had nothing to do with any type of resolution or goal or anything like that. It just when you feel something and you really want to do it, you're just going to go do it. Okay? You don't need an excuse like a New Year's resolution. Okay? That's why people don't stick with them because they started off false in the first place. Okay? And you can't ever, unless you truly mean it and, you know, you're not just following trend, it can work. But since it's become this big thing and it's okay to not... Um, do your resolutions because everyone falls off, then you're also giving yourself permission to fail. So if you're gonna 
try to change something about yourself, don't do it for New Year's. Do it whenever you feel like you're supposed to do it. Okay? You, you get trapped in the, the trend of things. So, <clears throat> I never make New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution is to never make a New Year's resolution because I, why do I have to wait till the New Year? Why can't I do it whenever I feel like it, you know? I might not get inspired until spring. I might not get inspired until uh, late winter to do something. You know, I might not get inspired unless I see something and get an idea. So I'm not going to fake motivate myself to do something I know I'm not passionate about. That I know I'm probably going to waste time, effort, and money on because it's not truly in my heart to do it yet. You know, I'm going to wait till I get that, uh, that urge to like, I got it. This surge of energy will just rush you and you will go head first into whatever you're trying to change or do okay like right now i still have this urge to to uh to organize for some reason so i'm going to organize my laundry room next when i get um when i get some time and then i'm going to organize my children's closet and probably after that i'm going to be burnt out on organizing for about a whole nother year <laughs> Um, so yeah, only do stuff when you're inspired and motivated, not because it's trend. Okay. Because trend will get you every time. Um, sometimes you'll see a bunch of people rush to get the same item, the same purse, the same clothes, the same look, the same decor, the same furniture. And it's like every YouTube channel you watch, it looks the same. Like the background is all the same. That's why I changed mine up. I got the dark furniture. I got, uh, I mix my, my style up. I don't try to be like what's trendy, you know, um, <clears throat> because you see one, you see them all. Okay. And you got to, you have to have some type of originality. Yes, you can be inspired by trends, but don't just be a, don't just be a trend, you know, incorporate your style and all that into it. Um, if you want to lose weight, for New Year's just you know instead of making this strict long diet workout plan joining the gym to change one thing it's like you know what? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna eat 200 calories less a day and that's the that's my New Year's resolution that's it that's easy you just cut out one snack okay and that's easier to maintain than going to the gym working out going on a diet uh, you know uh, tracking calories and all that stuff just psh, just take out one snack from your diet. That's New Year's resolution. And I read something and said, if you do that, you can lose like five pounds or something in a month or uh, 10 pounds or something in a month just by taking one snack out your diet and eating 200 calories less a day or something like that. Depending on how much you eat, you know, now if you eat a lot of calories and 200 calories are not going to matter, then I don't know. But if you just eat like a normal, you know, daily food intake and you just take out 200 of those calories you'll see a difference like if you if you like fast food and you go to mcdonald's and you get the meal instead of getting the whole meal just get the sandwich okay uh that's that's easy to do right okay so if you're gonna if you are gonna go on trend and do a new year's resolution don't put it up so high where you cannot stick with it do something easy why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> um, you know, uh, another New Year's resolution is, you know, when I get up, uh, you know, clean my room. You know, that's easy. Uh, that way, you know, pick something that you can do that's easy. You know how when people sacrifice something, they choose something that they really like and they, they, they like suffer and, and they break it. You know, like a lot of people fast or give up something for Lent or whatever, Passover, and like if their religion or, you know, meditating. And they give up something they really like and they struggle with it. Why would you do that to yourself? Give up something you don't like. And the, the purpose of giving up something or sacrifice something that you like is to show that you have restraint and all that stuff and that you're dedicated to this, this, and that. But if you are... Think about this for one second. Whatever, if it's if it's not good for you, then yes, give it up. But if it's not harming you and you think it is good for you, why would you give that up? Like mentally, that's depriving yourself saying, you don't need this, you don't deserve this. Give this up in order to feel like you deserve it again. That's stupid. 
okay it's it's a trick to say you know you don't deserve this you know why would I give up certain things when I asked for it in the first place this doesn't make sense right like if you manifest and you ask for abundance to never go hungry to always have good things and then you give up sugar or you give up meat or you give up eating um, but one meal a day because you want to feel humble and thankful that's silly it's supposed to be the opposite okay and a lot of religion will trick you into this to giving up your abundance and feeling below and humble and you know if you're not thankful every day for what you have and you have to deprive yourself of something in order to be thankful then you know what does that say about you okay reassess reassess okay I'm gonna leave this video at that thumbs up if y'all agree on the New Year's Eve resolution part and also if you have any extra advice to give this young lady put them in the comments I'm sure she'll be watching and I will see you guys later if y'all have an issue or a question or y'all want some advice as well put them in the comments and I'll probably pick a good subject a good topic to cover in the next few days okay thank y'all so much for watching happy holidays